യു ക്യാറ്റ് ക്വസ്റ്റ്യൻ നമ്പർ ത്രീ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് ആൻഡ് എയ്റ്റി ത്രീ വായ് ഈസ് അബോർഷൻ അൺഎക്സെപ്റ്റബിൾ അറ്റ് എനി ഫേസ് ഇൻ ദ ഡെവലപ്മെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ആൻ എംബ്രിയോ ഗാഡ് ഗിവൺ ഹ്യൂമൻ ലൈഫ് ഈസ് ഗാഡ്സ് ഓൺ പ്രോപ്പർട്ടി ഇറ്റ് ഈസ് സേക്രഡ് ഫ്രം ദ ഫേസ്റ്റ് മോമെൻറ്റ് ഓഫ് ഇറ്റ്സ് എക്സിസ്റ്റൻസ് ആൻഡ് നോട്ട് അണ്ടർ ദ കൺട്രോൾ ഓഫ് എനി ഹ്യൂമൻ ബീങ് before i formed you in the womb i knew you and before you were born i consecrated you god alone is lord over life and death not even my life belongs to me every child from the moment of conception on has a right to life from his earliest beginnings an unborn human being is a separate person and no one can infringe upon his rights not the state not the doctor and not even the mother the church's clarity about this is not a lack of compassion she means rather to point out the irreparable harm that is inflicted on the child who is killed in abortion and on this on and on his parents and on society as a whole protecting innocent human life is one of the noblest tasks of the state if a state evades this responsibility it undermines the foundations of a rule of law Christ, christopher cardinal shobon would say everything you need to know about abortion is the fifth commandment blessin teresa of calcutta would say god gives us the courage to protect every unborn life for the child is god's greatest gift for the family for a nation and for the world phil postman's would say if a human being is no longer safe in his mother's womb where in the world can he be safe question number 384 can a handicapped child be aborted no aborting a handicapped child is always a serious crime even if it is done with the intention of sparing that person suffering later on question number 385 can experiments be performed on living embryos and embryonic stem cells no embryos are human beings because human life begins with the fusion of a sperm cell and an egg pope benedict the 16th would say the diagnosis of disability in the unborn child cannot be a reason for abortion because life with such a disability is also desired and appreciated by god and here on earth no one can ever be sure that he or she will live without physical or spiritual limitation regarding embryos as biological material producing producing them as and them using their stem cells for purposes of research is absolutely immoral and falls under the commandment you shall not kill research on adult stem cells is a different matter since they cannot develop into human beings medical interventions on an embryo are justifiable only if they are made with the intention of healing if the life and unimpaired development of the child are assured and if the risks involved are not disproportionately great 
the gospel of matthew chapter 18 verse 6 would say whoever causes one of these little ones who believe in me to sin it would be better for him to have a great millstone fastened around his neck and to be drowned in the depth of the sea question number 386 Why does the fifth commandment protect the physical and spiritual integrity of a human being as well? The right to life and human dignity form a unity. They are inseparably connected to each other. It is possible to put a person to death spiritually also. The commandment you shall not kill we see that in Exodus chapter 20 verse 13 applies to both physical and spiritual integrity every seduction and incitement to evil every use of force is a serious sin especially when it occurs in a relationship of dependency the sin is especially evil when the dependence of children on adults is involved this means not only sexual abuse but also spiritual seduction by parents priests teachers or educators who lead their charges astray from values and so on If you love yourself then you love all men as yourself as long as you love one single person less than you love yourself you have not truly begun to love yourself St Teresa of Avila would say God loves us far more than we love ourselves God bless you all